Clancy, another freak, 40 odd year old, stupid beard, doesn't train, sleeps all day, jumps out of bed at 32 mile an hour, don't understand him at all, but he's a great guy. And the Superstock is held by a blade, so the bikes are good, the team's good. I've worked with the same people since 06, the same guy changing my rear wheel, same guy putting the fuel in, the same guy changing my visor. And, you know, it's not, not just me out on the track, you know, these guys have uh, a bit of pressure on when I come playing into the pit, so, you know, it's, it's, all, it's all good, it's all nice. I mean, I'm happy riders are fast riders, and that's where we are at the moment. You know, they, they still believe I can win. You know, I still believe I can win. You know, I've got a great teammate, Connor, he's coming good. Uh, we work good together. It's just a nice atmosphere in the garage. Uh, we're going testing uh, maybe next week, uh, next weekend, and for sure we're going testing in Monte Blanco in, uh, on the 9th of March for four days. Uh, so yeah, it's all good. Six months competitive. Super stop bike. I'm doing my own thing this year. Um, a bit of a Valvoline issue. Valvoline and motor oil. I got in the middle of a bit of a political wrangle with sponsors, so I just said, you know, I'll do my own thing. Uh, I couldn't get a dust cap out of Honda, they wouldn't even give me anything, I had to buy me a bike, buy everything. So really? I won 11, only 11 TTs on five blades and I couldn't even get a, a washer off them. Uh, so, yeah, but I'm not bothered, I just want to go racing, you know, there's a, there's a few people around me that chucked a few quid in the pot. So, it's all really cool, it's all cool stuff. Uh, we're going to do World Endurance as well, the three rounds of the Superstock World Endurance with me, Connor Cummings, a lad called Dan Stewart for the Jacksons. Uh, small team, but... It's good for me, it's, good. it's a lot of mileage, I enjoy that racing, I enjoy flipping, pound himself to death for 24 hours, that's a difficult sort of a story, you know. But that's where the broom behind the neck comes in, Andy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, you stick a broom up my ass now, you know, so, uh, <laughs> uh, But, yeah, we do some endurance, you know, fill the diary up, all sorts going on, classic TT, we the pattern and, uh, you know, maybe something else interesting, a bit of parading, Goodwood Festival of Speed, hopefully the Phillip Island Classic, Scarborough. Might do an odd, uh, odd BSB, but you know, I still, I still love chucking the helmet on. I still love that that buzz of, of going, you know, loading the motor on, we'll chuck the kids in or whatever, and you know, going racing, and, and that that's never gone away. And I say it's my twenty fifth year, and I just don't want it to end. You know, we Jerry was talking about in the in the in the, in the pub, and you know, we were probably pretty similar. You know, and he said it doesn't end. I said I hope not. You know, so I'd, I'd love to say I will stay involved in industry somehow, in industry, and. and Try and give something back, but you know I've had an amazing journey really in the last few years, and still, still I still want it to end. I just want to keep keep doing the business. We still got a few years on Jeremy, I think. Anyway, you should have seen him in Philip Island <laughs> the other way. I mean, he plays it down a little bit, but <laughs> he's right. He's still right in more right? I've been around a bit, and done a lot of meeting here and there, and a lot of miles, and you know I went to Philip Island. Same bikes, identical bikes, but there was no. I wasn't in the same street as Jeremy, and you know, I can tell. But, uh, you know, there's still, still a little bit of magic there, mate. And, uh, um, but the only thing is, though, he was fast on the bike, but I said I needed a haircut. <laughs> so he says, I can do it for you. Said, yeah, okay then, fist up with gin. Gets the clippers out, he's like, mmm, mm, just fucking taking a massive lump of my hair out, my right pig's ear. But he was, then I said, I need to get it fixed properly. I won't pay the $30 to get my hair cut. I thought it was eight quid when I got home, so. <laughs> He's a full Philly pilot. He's a shitty man. head. He just last couple of years. What have you done? <laughs> Long story. Minute. That's why I've got it so short. <laughs> 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 Really. Look, John, again, like Jeremy, we could listen to you all night, I'm sure, but unfortunately we don't have all night. But for now, ladies and gentlemen, it's great to see you looking so happy and fit. John McGuinness. Okay, from two uh, genuine British uh, racing legends to a man that we hope will be a legend in the future, but certainly a star of the present. Uh, MotoGP star for 2015 on a factory Honda. Please give it up for Scott Redding. <laughs> Scott, great to see you. I'm sure you're listening intently to the words of wisdom from these two boys uh, there from, from backstage. Uh, and I suppose, unlike Jeremy, you've come into Grand Prix at a young age and now you've, you've got the opportunity of a lifetime at, at, at a young age now. Uh, yeah, definitely, really. I mean, coming in young and kind of trying to achieve the best I can, really, and just working hard for it, trying to get the most out of it that I can, I guess. So. You know, I'm just trying to do all the right things that I can and work, work in the right direction. Yeah, you've been a, been a professional now for, for a few years, working hard, chasing the dream, and as I said, this is a big chance. What, what's, obviously, you've got a new bike for, for 2015. You managed to 
test it. Already out of Sepang last week, how was that? Um, no, it was really good actually. I mean, we didn't go for lap time, we went for a bit of a calm approach. I mean, Chris Pike's also new, the whole team's new. Um, we're all gelling really well, but I didn't want to go in and say, right, we're going to go and set the fastest lap time. It's not going to happen. Um, I said, take it easy, guys. We're just going to let me learn the bike, take the electronic off it, you know, just set it really low so I know what power I have and, you know, just let me have time on the bike. And we didn't change the suspension setting for the first two days, not a clip, just put fuel, put tyres, went a bit old school and just made the laps. Scott, I've known you for a long time and you, you, you like to have a good time, you like to have fun. Uh, I guess you'd like to be in the position where you can go out for a few beers after the race and really enjoy the racing, but it can't be like that in MotoGP these days, can it? Well, it can and it can't be. It depends what side of the podium you're on, you know. Um, <laughs> definitely if you're winning races and doing well, do what you like, but when you're trying to get there, for me, you have to really work hard and just have to sacrifice them things until you, you get at the front, I mean, so you work hard, you play hard. Yeah, that's the goal, isn't it? That is the goal. Um, what, what's the realistic end, do you think, then, for you, Scott, with this machine, with this package? I mean, I guess the big thing for you is that you're back, you're back with a team that you know and that you, that you love. I mean, you're, you're like a family with those guys. Yeah, it's nice to go back with everyone. I like the structure, the way they work. I mean, it was in a full of time. After after. I think um, and then yeah, you've beaten the first races with him, you must think. If there's anybody out there that can mix it with him, you've got to be one of the guys, haven't you? Eventually. Yeah, the thing is, I have the same bike as well, so a bit more pressure for me, really. But, I mean, my first year, I'm just learning. Like, uh, last year for me, I couldn't really learn much, but they are close enough. I feel like this year is more like my first year. Um, and I'll be able to follow and learn from the other guys in the races, like I did with Nicky and stuff last year. Um, but, yeah, there will be a day that I will beat him. Um, but it's just a matter of getting there and finding the way he's riding the bike and understanding it and then putting it into practice and making it happen in the race. So it will happen one day, it's just a matter of time. There's always um, a kind of a positive cycle when a, a rider who's that good gets into that situation, like Mark has gone into Repsol Honda, uh, and they create a package from the beginning that's so strong and then it can't, I guess it kind of, it's a snowball effect, isn't it? And it's difficult to break into that. Um, yeah, like that's what I always say, I mean, this. Uh, a rider's got everything and he has a lot of talent, so it's really hard to beat, you know. I mean, I'm not saying I didn't have a lot coming up through, but he was always on the best bike, always on the best bike, and he's got a lot of talent, so his confidence is always building, building, building. He goes to MotoGP, he goes to a factory team directly. You know, I go to MotoGP, I go to Grissini on an open bike, which couldn't perform mm. at all. Mm. So you're always on the back foot trying to catch up, and he was kind of you know, almost like a seamless gearbox. Every gear he goes, everything he does, he's just one step ahead, you know. Mm. He goes to the dirt track, he's got a factory dirt track bike. He does this, he has the best of everything, and I'm kind of, feel like I'm just trying to keep up all the time, so. Mm. I mean, now I've got the, so say, same bike as him for the next two years. I have to do my best to try and show people that I can be in. Yeah, it's a long game, isn't it? That's the thing, it's not a, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Yeah, exactly. Um, I guess one guy that you might be looking to be, there'll be a Brit Bit of British pride at stake, but Cal Crutchlow on the same bike as you as well this year. Yeah, um, he's kind of my first target, to be honest. I mean, <laughs> wasn't supposed to be very <laughs> serious. <laughs> um, really, because he's kind of gone on to the satellite factory bike, same as me. Um, but he has a little bit of experience with the tyres and also with these bigger bikes, so it kind of gives me a challenge to try and catch up a bit. I'm not going to set my target directly on markers because it would be pretty disappointing every day to come home like one second, one and a half seconds behind. You know, at least with Cal, I feel like I'm kind of close enough to start to work to catch him. Mm. Um, so that's my first target is to try and get to Cal, battle with him a few races, try and beat him, and then slowly work my way up through the field. That'd keep him quiet a little bit, wouldn't it? And that's what we, that's what we want, Scott, I reckon. <laughs>
talking to, to Jeremy and John as well, so let's move away from our GP for now. Um, like these guys, you love to ride, don't you? You love motorcycles. It's a great passion of yours. And one thing of, that we, we can see through social media and things now uh, is just how much you ride during the, during the winter. It's a big part of your program. Well, this winter I didn't ride a lot. I spent most of it on the sofa playing the PlayStation with a broken <laughs> sternum. So that kind of sucked. I'm kind of making up for it now, you know. Literally, I didn't ride a bike um, from the Super Prestigio um, until one week before Malaysia. I was six weeks out, so I was riding like every day then. I come back, I'm riding. Um, and actually, when I've gone to Barcelona Airport today, I've got my motocross bike in the back of the van. So on Sunday, I can go ride up near Montmelo. So, for me, it's just enjoying to be on the bike, and I think everyone's the same. I kind of sometimes I enjoy, I enjoy more messing around on the motocross bike than I do actually racing. When you're not having a good time, the best thing is to go and have fun and do something else. Yeah, and you get your dad involved a little bit. I saw you was tweeting some pictures, and your girlfriend as well teaching her to ride. Yeah, that's kind of not a good idea that I have. <laughs> uh, teaching Penny to ride, I mean, she's getting pretty good actually, which is good. But yeah, so I want this now, we need to try that. And I'm like, oh, okay, you know, just change the suspension. Do, yeah, just doing my work. Um, yeah, my uncle came out the other day with a supermoto. We had quite a good time, went out, did some riding, and yeah, I also do a lot of stuff like I practice techniques when I go supermoto. I kind of do my own thing and. You know, I'm kind of teaching myself, I've got the come that, and like, people are looking at like, what's this weirdo doing? In my head, I know what I'm doing, you know, but it was just good to have some of the family out instead of being out on my own all the time and just having a laugh. And actually, I did crash being a dick, I have to say. Um, but yeah, just enjoy it, it's the main thing. It's hard to learn new things without crashing, that's the whole problem with motorcycle racing, isn't it? Yeah, unfortunately, that's the way we have to learn. Yeah, it certainly is. All right, uh, guys, for now, Scott Redding, everybody, we wish you all the best this year, Scott and Martin GP. Thank you. Thank you. Definitely Britain's biggest star for the future of Martin GP, and probably one of the few guys that can actually stop Mark Marquez in the future. So not many of them around. Right, we've got some questions from social media, have yeah. we here, Ollie? Yeah, um, a few questions. The floor as well. okay. Sounds, we've got a few questions here from uh, people who've been watching the live stream. Hello to you. I forgot to say hello when we first started the evening. So if you're watching on the, uh, on the live stream, you're very welcome to join us here. Uh, guys have been sending us some questions in through Twitter and uh, through the Bike Social website. Uh, but let's, first of all, let's start off with the people that we've got in, in here this evening. Has anybody got a question? that they would like to ask any of the three boys up here on stage this evening. Gentleman at the back there. Oh, he's coming up. I thought that was Matt Oxley then coming forward. <laughs> yes, sir. You guys ride with the Frag and we all know you carry a testicle with Randall Paris. But do you ride on the road and if you do, how do you cope? Okay, I'm going to repeat that question just for the benefit of our uh, people who are watching uh, that on the stream. Uh, the gentleman says, we all know how well you ride on the track. You I think the words were, carry your testicles round in wheelbarrows. <laughs> I'm, not I'm not paraphrasing. Uh, do you ride on the road? And if so, what do you ride? How do you cope? Well, we know that John rides on the roads. So it copes pretty all right. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll start with you, Scott. Um, I don't even own a bike license, so I'm out of the situation. <laughs> <laughs> pretty short and uh, comprehensive answer to that, John. Occasion on the road, but it does scare me a little bit. You know, I can't, for a start, I can't get insurance on the road. So <laughs> it's, uh, now, we're, now we're here on the bench, you know. As soon as I tell them about bike racing, it just Don't do it. There's a, the ring, the ring, the, the dialing tone changes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was a welder or a dentist system, I get insured, no problem. So you're a bricklayer. Oh, I'm a bricklayer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Said, can I have insurance for my KTM? You give me, a, you give me a KTM RCA. 
I said, you know, what, what do you do? I said, I'm a professional bike racer. No, I'm sorry, got the kind of insurance. Sorry, uh, I mean, uh, there's a good idea that I can, I can, I can ride a bike, but they it, it said, sorry, uh, you can't ride insurance for that. So I pulled the bank and said, I'm a company director. Yeah, no problem, maybe quit. <laughs> I wasn't Dennis, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> they were 800. <laughs> Can I get pinch yours today? <laughs> I think we just about summed that one up. Uh, thank you for your question. Anybody else got a question for the guys here at all? Hands up. I'm sure you do, but you're all just a bit too nervous. A couple more beers and you might probably be getting those hands up and harassing them later on. The guys, incidentally, at the end of this are going to be here for you for... Uh, autographs and photos, so you'll be able to join them. Yes, the gentleman there with the Alpine Stars cap. Scott, is there any going to be any real difference between your bike and Mark Marquez's bike? Oh, hang on, hang on. Basis. So the question is um, to Scott, is there going to be any difference between your bike and Mark Mar Marquez's bike uh, over the first three races? Yeah. yeah. Uh, actually, no, but I think there will be small changes. I I do believe he has a bit of a different airbox, um, but there's not a big difference. It's definitely competitive enough to beat him, definitely the first few races, not saying I will, but there is that opportunity. Um, and to be honest, actually in Sepang, the top speed wasn't too bad. It was like 6k down on market, so I'm pretty happy with that. It looked better than being 26k down like last year. So <laughs> yeah, cool. Oh, I know why. Yeah, yeah. That was nice. That was a nice moment. Uh, any other questions here from the floor before we go to our uh, social media questions? Yes, sir. If you could only ride one more bike, what bike would that be? If you could only ride one more bike, well, what bike would that be? Scott? <laughs> you got to think. <laughs> Done. Good question. <laughs> So uh, let's stick to that one for now. Matt. Okay, yes. Oh, Danny John Jules. Which one of you three guys is the best actor? <laughs> oh, there might be a role going, is that what it is? Which one of these three guys is the best actor? <laughs> Who's up for a Who's up for a BAFTA? <laughs> Not me. This is Danny John Jules here of Red Dwarf and Death in Paradise fame. There might be is there is there a role going? There? The cat. The cat is in the house. Dwayne Diblett is in the house. <laughs> Go on, Danny. I heard he's up for a Everyone's seen Under the Skin, that film. Oh, that's right, of course, Under the Skin. Jeremy, you're a movie star. I forgot that. You're right, yeah, he's a movie star. Hey, tell us about that, Jeremy. You were, of course, with Scarlett. Tell, tell, tell us about Scarlett Johansson, that's what we want to do. I'll tell you one thing, don't watch it. <laughs> <laughs> don't get too excited. Danny Thomas Jules, thanks for that, for putting that right in front of us here. But honestly, the only person I think that, that said he liked it was Stephen Fry. I don't know Stephen Fry all about movies. <laughs> um, I had a, an experience acting alongside Scarlett Johansson, and uh, l lucky for the experience, love, love every minute for it. Of it. Uh, some, some bird from New York. Uh, 
Anyway, a bit like John, we'll a big fat check. <laughs> <laughs> you're saying, they're saying it's a cult movie. Yeah, that's what they say, well, I, I mean, I watched it. No, they didn't it, say uh, cult, that wasn't the word. Danny, I took my boys to watch it, my wife to watch it, and I swear to God, they wanted to get up and leave. <laughs> 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 it's, it's our cut as well. So. <laughs> <laughs> What's All the right. name of your character? The bad man. Yeah, the bad man. The guy mine is the best actor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, okay, yes, one more. Oh, Chris, oh, Mark Potter. Yeah. Uh, has he got any tents for sale? Yes. <laughs> question for John McGuinness from Mark Potter here. Uh, are you in a professional capacity right now, Mark? Of course. He's from Bike Social. He's not afraid to admit. Have you got any well, tents for sale? <laughs> you might have to explain that one. <laughs> He's slagging me out tight to etc. etc. But I'm not really, but it was a few years ago we went to the British Car Grand Prix when the job was good, you know, Honda was throwing a few quid about I could actually get a dust cap off him a few years ago. And uh, the, they did this thing in the, in the F1 Grand Prix and they did all these tents, about 20 tents, not all these guests there, VIPs, we all stopped in the tent, they blow uh, beds, uh, sleeping bag, lights, torches, all this sort of stuff. And at the end of the, uh, at the end of the F1, uh, race day, the Honda people said, uh, we're going to leave these tents behind and if anybody wants them, you can take them. So I was like, fuck oh, now. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm dropping all these tents and I'll get 20 quid for that and 10 for that. <laughs> bag and I'm like, I couldn't get any more in the car. I didn't see how I'd I'm just trying to get these tents in the back. He took 19. <laughs> <laughs> There's still a few of them in the garage now. <laughs> Matt, when you broke the 130 at the Isle of Man, who was his best pit man? When you broke the 130 at the Isle of Man, who was your best pit man? Stop blowing up your arse. It was him, he was in there. He was in there looking cool with his sunglasses on. He was all part of it. I don't know like, 200 mile an hour, bouncing off walls and trees, and he's like, oh, yeah. This is the winner's enclosure. He slipped right down, you're like, oh. Holding the champagne. Put the old rolls on. Do you want a drink? Do you want a drink? Oh, I have to do it. Do you need a wheel? No, I didn't get one as well. You were there for moral support, mate. Yeah, you were there. I've eaten. I've got to hold your trophy. You don't hold up your bollocks. The TV. I need a wheel barrow. That is the trophy, yeah. Right. I think we better take the questions away from the floor. Yeah, we're going down a very, very slippery slope. So let's get back to our social media questions that have been sent through the live stream. This one's from Danny John Jules. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> oh, no, I've not got one yet. <laughs> Save it for after. Uh, okay, we've got, a, uh, we've got a question here from Chris B. Uh, this is for, uh, presumably for John. What are your views on Guy Martin's possible retirement? <laughs> Oh, interesting. <laughs> uh, I don't know, just an attention seeking weirdo, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I to. <laughs> uh, it, do you know what? I just realised, is it live? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think he's watching. Uh, it's wearing, it's wearing it's wearing it's Sorry, Mum. Uh, <laughs> I don't know the guy. I don't, who knows what he's thinking? You know, a woman is. Can't backtrack now. <laughs> Yeah, well, one minute he's laid under a scanner, the next thing he's starting to spitfire run, the next thing he's racing a, an Indian in his, or whatever, I don't know, who cares at the end of the day, I'd be sad to see him retire, I'd like to see him, I would like to see him win one, obviously while I'm still racing, uh, <laughs> <laughs> what are you clapping for, it's about time he won one, come on, he's had everything given to him, he's got a BMW now, he can't win on that, he's definitely does need to retire, so, yeah, he's, uh, good friends though, yeah, no, I do, I do like Guy, seriously, it's all right. It's a bit quirky, it's a bit different, he's a character, you know, we need it all. You know, we're all different, we all have our own weird ways and stuff, but he's extreme. <laughs> I don't even know if he's where he's going, he pushes on, but his hair's here, you know. So, uh, yeah. Thanks, John. I think Guy's on Channel 4 at the same time tonight, so if you're watching that, don't worry. It'll be all right. 
Um, here's one from uh, from Matthew Pickles. This is for uh, for Scott. Scott, did your lid, presumably uh, your helmet, actually touch the tarmac at Valencia? <laughs> Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> did it actually touch down? Yeah, in, in the race, uh, well, not in the race, uh, after the race, because I, I did it in qualifying. I didn't need to actually know anyone was seeing me do it. Until I came in, everyone's like, oh, fucking now I was like, what? Then I watched back the replay and I was like, oh shit, everyone saw me doing that, like I'm like, such an idiot. Of course it went everywhere, then I was like, okay, I didn't actually touch it, so even more of a loser. Then after the race, I said, guys, we're doing a good race, like, I'm going to try and do it if I crash, I'm sorry, like, I'll, I'll try it. And actually, I did try, obviously, it had been raining and stuff, and that's so slowing down, I was like, oh fuck, I've got to do it in turn 10, it's the only place I can do it. So I got to go down once, and I'm like, I didn't touch, I go down twice, like, I didn't touch, I was like, I'm running out of time. Third time, I managed to crack it down. <laughs> Lovely. That's uh, two riders up here who've had the helmet trailing on the floor. Is that right, Jeremy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I won. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, let's see if we've got time for one more question. Uh, I think we've pretty much actually covered most of the questions from social media in the chat so far. Anybody else want a chance to get a question in for the boys? Uh, uh, Roger Keyes here at the front. Yeah, Roger. Uh, so a question to Scott from a gentleman who used to be involved in his management, I believe, if I'm not wrong. What did you put down on your car insurance when you sorted it out and he wasn't involved? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Student. <laughs> Definitely wasn't a writer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you were liberal with the truth. That's the way to be in it. One more from the back there. Yes, sir. Which one of the GP going in the Bit of a hot topic there. Where would you like to see the British Grand Prix go in the future? Silverstone, Donington, or the new circuit of Wales? Might be a tough one for you to answer this one there, Scott, but I'm sure the other guys might have an opinion. I think uh, if we wanted to have an enduro race, we'd go for Wales, to be fair, because there's no asphalt there at the moment. Um, but to be honest, what would you guys prefer? I like Silverstone. I don't know. <laughs> we'll have a vote. We can decide it tonight. Donington. Yeah. Right. Looks like an even split. Looks like an even split. So we'll go with Wales. Wales is the winner tonight. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up once again for these three wonderful ambassadors of our sport. Jeremy McWilliams, John McGuinness, Scott Redding. We're not finished yet though. Uh, first of all, we've got um, a raffle to draw. Is that right? It fell out of your pocket. Did it? Oh, okay. Right. Uh, yeah, so we'll do the raffle. There's the raffle ticket. Right, we've got a raffle then for tonight. How many prizes have we got, Ollie? Well, more than one, so we can get started now. <laughs> the winner of a year's free insurance is uh, <laughs> Jeremy McWilliams. Oh, about 15 prizes, okay. Oh, so we've got plenty to right. You crack on with that. Scott, you pull the first ticket out and you just uh, let me know who the winner is. Yeah, go for it. Uh, the first prize is, uh, is a Dunlop cap signed by John McGuinness. Give it then and I'll stab it. We've got number 124. 124? Oh, look at that. John, have you got a pen? I just signed it. Here's your cap. John's going to have to sign it right now because these are fresh. <laughs> and the kiss is for free. Uh, we've got two more caps actually for John to sign. So, John, pull another. Um, give us that, John. Pull another number out, Scott. Just pull another number out here. Am I the cap man? Yeah, the cap man. And the next number to come out is number 143. 143, the lady there. Well done. Get yourself back up. Uh, everybody, you will also get the opportunity to meet the guys, get their autographs, have a picture taken with them as well as the night progresses. So don't worry about that. They're going to stick around for 20 minutes or so after this. Uh, same one again, uh, Scott. Another. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, one more. And we've got one more after this as well. So another Dunlop cap signed by John McGuinness. Same prize. Go on, Scott. What's the number? Uh, 
one six four. One six four. We got one. We got a winner. At the end of that. Ready to hear that? Oh, here he is. Well, he's coming Thank you very much. Good man. Tom, Mark. What's your name? Mark. Mark, congratulations. Well done. John's here to sign your cap for you. Um, next prize. Yeah. At the very end, there's one more prize. Silverstone is between the two, two GP taking the data. Right. Great. Is that three caps? Yeah. <laughs> okay, the, uh, Scott, you should draw this one as well, really. This is um, a Scott Redding signed calendar. Is it 2015? It's not a 2014 one, it's a 2015 one. Well, last year's that one. And an exciting year for Scott as well, of course. Scott's going to sign the calendar, that's the next one. Scott, what's the number? 158. 158? Really, yeah. we got 158, here he is. Good man. Just what you wanted. Um, uh, next up, we've got the uh, John McGuinness official Dunlop tribute. Yeah, right. It's got part of his tyre in it from laps five and six of the 2013 series. Oh, fantastic. Oh, wow. Cool. Um, let me see that. We've got a souvenir pack here that Dunlop have brought to us. It, also, it includes an actual piece of John McGuinness's winning tyre from laps five and six of the 2013 Senior TT. So a real piece of TT history there. And John's going to sign that for you as well. Um, so we need another number out of the bag, Scott. You might as well carry on for us. You know, you'll pass it on if you want. I know you're not used to these menial tasks nowadays, mate. So this is for the Dunlop Tribute Pack. When he's done having his picture. John, draw us a number out, please. I've had my hands in it. Sorry, mate. I've had my hands in a few old boxes before. <laughs> <laughs> Pink one. One fifty. One fifty. This is already signed, sir. So. Yeah. This is already signed. Okay, nice one. Hi, <laughs> right, gentlemen here. Congratulations. Well done. It's, it's, already it's already signed. It's already signed, is that actually? So. Thanks, John. All right, Cheers. good man. Uh, okay, we've got a MotoGP 2014 yeah. season review. DV. Oh, book, sorry. Oh, this is Julian Ryder's book. This is a great uh, collector's piece. Good read as well. Uh, so we're going to get Scott to sign that as well. So who's going to draw the number for us, Jeremy? Season review book. 141. 141. It's got to be close to Who had 142? That was. 141. Give us a shout if you've got it, or else we'll draw it again. Shout again, shout again. 141. Right, we'll draw it again. Oh, shout out. Shout out. Shout out. Shout out. <laughs> We're going to draw it again. We'll draw it again. Are the names written down with the number two? 130. 130. 130. We got one. Yeah, we've got. Well done. The young lady there gets the um, signed season review. Congratulations. You get Scott to sign it for you. You go. Good administrative work, that Jerry checking the tickets. I never thought to do that. Hey, you you <laughs> <laughs> okay, we've got a, a signed there, Scott Redding cartoon. Oh, we've got two of these. We'll draw two tickets together and get these two signed. Jeremy, can we have? Oh, you have your picture done. Two, two, bring, draw two out. Yeah, two. Same. <clears throat> Two signed pictures here of Scott, a uh, really one, cool two, cartoon. Two. One, two, two, one, T, T. And one, four, two. And one, four, two. Oh, we don't already have one, four, two, we're not. No. One, two, two, lady here, congratulations. Let me just check that. Scott's going to sign that for you. <laughs> yeah, hang on a minute, you have to go through administration. <laughs> You have to claim them, otherwise John's going to sell them on eBay. Here's the one call to. <laughs> I thought we'd already had. Oh yeah, we do, we do, yeah. You want to both get in for your photograph? Good stuff. That's clever. Are these world superbikes? Oh, no, British. Ah, British. Okay, next up, uh, next prize is um, tickets for the opening round of the British Superbike Championship, which this year, of course, is at Donington Park. Um, so, yay! 
a few people from Donington in the house as well here. Um, okay, so uh, tickets for Donington. We've got a number. One, two, three. Easy as that. Easy as that. <laughs> There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's a blue one with me, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, we've got signed uh, prizes now from two lads who uh, were supposed to be with us tonight, but they ended up pissed up in the pub next door. We can't get them out. They got in a fight and pulled a couple of fat local girls. Uh, the first one is Alex Marquez. So, signed Alex Marquez cap, and the number is 167. <laughs> so, lad, congratulations. Do I get a picture? You get a picture, yeah, just standing there with the boys. Put your cap, put, put your cap on. Do it, do it right. <laughs> Oh, are they? Oh, okay. These are actually uh, championship winning podium caps, so uh, take it back. Yeah, don't wear it out tonight. You might want to keep that in good nick. And the other one is uh, from Tito Rabat, so let's um, pull out Tito Rabat's championship winning podium cap, kindly donated tonight by Dunlop. And the number is 133. Oh, 135. 135, sorry, 133. Alright, take it back. Sit down. You were waiting for that. It was like one, three, five. One, three, five. One, three. Oh, mate, sorry. I say you. He's got it. You, you oh, come oh, up oh. and have your photo taken anyway. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> you see them die? Yeah, yeah. Miles better actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not too strong, are they? Yeah, you get up there. Get your get your, get your photo done. <laughs> Where's number 133 gone? Is he gone home? Come up here and get your photo taken with the guys. Oh, you, get, you can get it there. Ah, oh, he's all embarrassed now. We've upset him. We've upset him. Thanks very much. Oh, you've got your Scott Redding cap on as well. Lovely suit. Uh, right, is that um, that's all our business? Oh, yeah, sorry, one last prize. Uh, we've got two tickets for the MotoGP at Silverstone. So you can go to watch Scott tonight's special prize. Let's hope it's 133 for God's sake. <laughs> no, you've got on your hand. <laughs> Dig deep. No tickets left. Dig deep. It's 166. Oh. It's not his main name, one. <laughs> <laughs> it's either 166 or 991. It's 166. Hey guys. Yeah, Oh, nice to see some young blood up here as well. Get yourself up here for a picture with the boys. Okay, we've got um, one last little piece of business, as I said. The guys are uh, going to be around for about 15, 20 minutes here, so if you form an orderly queue when we've finished, we'll be able to uh, to get them up, uh, get yourselves up and you get a, a, some autographs and some photographs with the guys. But Jeremy, just stay there for one second. We do have one last little bit of uh, business to take care of tonight. Is there, uh, is there a lady in here called Harps Hall? No talk? This lady here, Harps, can you just come up and join us here on the stage here for a second? Give her a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. She has no idea why she's coming up here. Harps, come up here, stand next to me. Uh, what's the name of your boyfriend? Darren here. Darren. And has he brought you out here tonight? He has indeed. Are you a bike fan or not? Yes. You are? Oh, so, so it's a good night out there. It's a Valentine's night out. Uh, should, let's get Darren up here as well. And Darren, give Darren a round of applause as well. <laughs> Darren, you come here. Come stand next to me. I think you've got something you'd like to say. It's early in the day, so what about today to say, will you marry me? Maybe we've got 
Scott, Scott's got some flowers and some champagne for you. Thanks, Priscilla. Priscilla. Well, I think that's a good way to end the proceedings up here on the stage tonight. I once again give it up for, for Darren and for Harps and for John, Jeremy and Scott. I wish you all the best for the season ahead. Have a great night, everybody. Enjoy yourselves. Cheers.